The meeting is being live streamed. Okay, everybody. Happy Monday after thanks. No, no, after Easter. I'm coming to you live from the I Love Coaching headquarters and my new headphones. I trust everyone can hear me just fine. Hold please real quick. These are, let me shut that down. There we go. These are from the Easter Bunny and uh, the Easter Bunny left them for me and I'm obsessed with them. They're the new Apple ones, um, just the big sound uh, uh, noise canceling headphones. And I feel like a, I feel like I'm either a, a DJ or just um, some guy that likes to wear big headphones, but they're pretty cool. I can't hear anything else. Okay, so happy Monday mojo. Let me open this up over here. We are today gonna talk about leverage. One of my favorite topics leverage is, because I'm gonna do a podcast this week with one of our coaches, Troy Marsh to be exact. And we're going to be talking about leverage. We're going to be talking about leverage in many, many, many different ways. And today I'm going to talk to you about leverage, the importance of leverage in your business. But let me open up Facebook here so I can see when you all have questions. And by the way, if I, if I look goofy in these headphones, just, just tell me. Tell me and, and uh, I'll leave them on because I really like them. They're very comfortable. Okay, hold on. I love coaching community. Here we are. Okay. What is leverage? Let's start with the word leverage itself. What is leverage? Leverage, guys, is, is the ability to take things off of your shoulders and your head. Leverage is giving something to either somebody, a system, something that, again, frees up your time. So let's, let's, let's think about bandwidth, right? Let's think about bandwidth. There we go. We are all, we all have a bandwidth, Okay, number one, we have 24 hours in a day, and the bandwidth that each one of us has gets filled up with your day in the form of actions, right? So let's just take a real estate agent as an example. Their bandwidth is, if they get up at 5 a.m., they have a bandwidth that then says, okay, fine, you can fill whatever you want in this space until you go to sleep at night, right? Right. And let's say you get up at 5 a.m. and you go to the gym, then you journal, then you do your affirmations, then you come into the office and now you're lead generating. Uh, and let's say you're doing that for two hours, then you go into training mode or then you go into appointment mode, then you go into closing the appointments and then you are finished, right? So all of that happened in a day and that's bandwidth. And I'm gonna stay here in the real estate space here for a second because what'll happen as an agent then starts to progress through their business is they will start to have the same bandwidth, but the bandwidth thing gets filled up with things that are not revenue generating. That's a problem. When you are in the space of a business, now I'm talking any business as a whole, and your bandwidth is filled up with less revenue generating actions, you need to leverage. Okay, you need to leverage. So let's go back to the definition of leverage. What is leverage? Leverage keeps you in a space of revenue generation period. What if we just said that that was our definition of leverage? Leverage keeps you in the space of your 20%, keeps you in the space of your most productive self. Okay. Now, what does that look like? If we stay in the real estate space, if we stay in the entrepreneurial space, by the way, no one has said my headphones look goofy yet. Uh, I can see myself here on Facebook in, a, in our group. Nope, no one yet. Nope. Oh. Okay. So here we go. What do we do in leverage? How do we, how do we leverage ourselves the very first time? Well, that's simple. Again, we're going to look at our bandwidth and we're going to say what is revenue producing and what is not revenue producing. Your job as the CEO of your company is to produce leverage and find talent. We're not talking about talent just yet. We're talking about leverage here, which will go into talent. It all goes hand in hand. But your job is revenue. Your job is to increase revenue of your company every single day. And if you're not doing that, then you need to go find talent. Okay, let's have some fun here. Finding the right talent. What does that mean? Well, before I even get into that, guys, I want you to pay attention to this. Let's go back to bandwidth. If you find yourself not generating enough revenue because your bandwidth is filled with too many to-dos, then we have to understand what specifically is this individual or this system or this, this, this whatever that's going to come into my world help me do. Here's an action item. 
I want you to understand and see your entire day. I want you to write down every single thing that you do from opening up mail to paying bills to lead generating to going on appointments to negotiating contracts to to whatever it is. I want you to write down every single thing that you do in your day. Now, I'm not going to go down a bunny hole or bunny trail here because I could. There's a from strategic coach. Go Google this and, and download this called Unique Ability. In that sheet, I've, I've been a, a facilitator for this exercise many, many times. And your, your unique ability sheet, what you're going to do is you're going to list every single thing that you do every single day. Then you're going to go into defining what is your passion zone. What is the space that you could do all day long? And time goes by just like that. That's probably your unique ability. Everything else, I would offload. Everything else, I would offload to a leverage. Remember, leverage definition that we just discussed here is increasing and keeping you in your revenue generating space. Okay, let's pause all of that and let's go into finding the right who, right? So finding the right who looks something like this. When you have a well-defined understanding of what specifically you need offloaded because it's either not your unique ability or it doesn't generate revenue, that's the job intention. Not job description, job intention. This is going to be the space that you are then giving to this system or to this individual to offload so you can stay in your bandwidth of generating revenue. Now, I had an old coach of mine used to tell me this. Adam, when you go find and hunt for a bear, you have to have the full true understanding of what type of bear you're hunting for. So he would always say, list all the attributes of that bear. Competent, um, um, self-sufficient, independent, um, self-starter, uh, someone that can um, think like you, take the reins from you, whatever it may be, you define those attributes of the who that you're looking for that can keep you in your revenue generating space. So when he would say, okay, fine, now that you understand what bear you're hunting for, where do you hunt for this bear? That was always the fun one. Let me give you an example of what we did one time. So I had a staff member on my team and this individual wanted to go find uh, a leverage in his role. So I made him go through that whole exercise of understanding what he was gonna be offloading, right? What was his unique ability and what type of bear was he looking for? He came to me and said, here's the bear that I'm looking for. So I was reading through the attributes and I said, where does this bear live? And he says, I have no idea. I said, you don't, I do. And he's like, what do you mean you know where this bear lives? I said, get into my car. He's like, where are we going? So we got into my car and based on the attributes that he had listed out, I thought to myself, this is someone that, this is someone that can, can uh, keep the attention of someone in there and, and right here in front of them and in the peripheral, they can also work with that person. So instantly, I don't know why I thought about this. I went to a makeup person at like a department store. So someone that is sitting there doing the makeup on the female and entertaining the husband at the same time, I thought that's, that's this individual's bear. So we went to a department store. We walked through the makeup, two men walking through the makeup aisle uh, or area and I kid you not, I sat down in a makeup artist seat. Do you call them artists? I know, a makeup person seat to see if they would come over and talk to me. And sure enough, the ones that did come over and talk to us uh, were the ones that fit the attribute. We got their numbers. We, we full disclosure, share with them what we were doing. Uh, we got their numbers. And I actually think we hired one and they were extremely successful. So who's right? How do you find the right who's? You have to have a list of exactly what the job intentions are, a definition of the bear that you're going to go hunting for, and then go find where that bear lives and then go talk to him, right? Go talk to him. What else do we have on this list? Understand, oh, this is a good one. Understanding your budget when you hire people. Okay, there's many, many, many different schools of thought in this one. I'll give you the one that I coach to. Number one, it's your PL. Your PL tells you exactly what you can hire, when you can hire, and how much it's going to, what your budget is. What is your budget for this who? Now, there's a book called Who Not How, and I highly recommend you all reading it. Great, great book, simple read. We read it in our tribe, our coaching tribe uh, last year, I believe it was, and it was one of the favorite books that we read. 
Your budget though, your budget is going to tell you what you can afford. Now, I want you to remember there's three types of, of, of people that you're going to be looking for. Number one, it's called raw talent. Raw talent is going to be the least expensive because they don't have a track record of success. The second one is going to be proven talent. Now, proven talent isn't going to be the cheapest, but it's not going to be the most expensive. Um, hold on. No, no, I lied. It goes raw, then emerging talent. So this is talent that is starting to ramp up whatever career they have, starting to have some success, but they don't have the, they haven't reached the top yet, right? So that is emerging talent. And then the last one's going to be proven talent. Proven talent has been there, done it, and now they are going to grow forward with hopefully you and your uh, team. So raw talent is going to be the least expensive. Emerging talent is going to be the middle of the road. Proven talent is going to be the most expensive. Okay, so now let's go back to your PL. That's going to be a conversation that you have with yourself and with a coach, hopefully, of understanding what specifically you can budget for um, this cost of a salary, basically. There's many different schools of thoughts. I'm not going to give you any. Here's what I would suggest, though. Go pick up the MREA book, Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, and follow the budget model inside of there. The budget model will tell you that in the operating expense, you'll have your two greatest salaries. I'm sorry, your two greatest expenses will be lead generation and salaries. Those are your two greatest out of a 30% operating budget expenditure. 30% of your revenue will go into your operating expense. And roughly your two greatest ones in there will be lead generation and salaries. So go figure out what that is for you. I would say anywhere between 10 to 12% of your uh, overall revenue. So for example, if you did $100,000 in revenue, if you're in that budget space, that would be roughly 10 to $12,000. That's not a lot of money. That's okay. Figure it out, right? Figure it out and maybe don't spend money elsewhere. So you can go get some raw emergent or proven talent. That's simple right there, right? That's simple from the standpoint that, you need to know your numbers, guys. When you're out there looking for talent, here's what I want you to think. When you find talent, hire talent. That's all I'm going to say. When you find talent, hire talent. Talent begets talent, right? We've heard that many different ways. When you have a talented person on your team, they will push you. When a talented person joins your team, they will push for solutions. When a talented person joins your team, it is a little bit scary because, again, you, you you don't want to upset them, right? Because you want to keep them growing. But here's the cool part when you find talent. Talent makes you smile. Talent makes you excited to go into your organization. Talent is like the jam to go get. Higher talent. When you find tire, talent, higher talent. The opposite is true. When you don't have talent, you pull your hair out. When you don't have talent, uh, the tangible and intangible cost of a bad hire is not good. Um, so all that to be said, if you understand there's there's a system inside of Keller Williams called career visioning, um, go understand how to find and hire talent. That is a great, great resource. Doesn't matter if you're with Keller Williams or not. If you're not, go find when career visioning is being taught in your area, or if it's not being taught in your area, fly to there. Again, I don't care what brokerage you're with, get to that course. I bet I've taken that course at least 12, if not 15 times. Um, and now it's mostly all up there. Okay, so that's it. Now watch this last thing I'm going to say. Hello, my, how long have I been going for? I have no idea. There's no, no timer anywhere. I want to stay on track. 47. Okay, here we go. Last thing. Now that you have this person hired, right? So you, you understood what to offload. Uh, you understood where, what your bear looked like, the attributes. You found your bear. You hired your bear. Now what do you do? Remember your bandwidth. Remember that conversation that we talked about at the beginning, at the bottom of the hour here. You're not a trainer. Your job is revenue, right? Your job is to go create more revenue. Uh, you're not a trainer. You're not a coach. You're, you're not someone that's going to create what we call a 30, 60, 90 program. Remember, all that's already built out there for you. So go R&D that from somebody else or from just, just Google that stuff, right? Get your admin or your director of operations a coach, okay? Now, I'm saying that because, yes, inside of I Love Coaching, we have coaches for your admin people. We have coaches for your director of operations. In my opinion, we have some of the best on the planet. They even have courses that they can put your coaches, uh, your uh, director of ops or, or EAs into uh, that is, oh, well, it's, it's a, what is it? Three, six, nine, 12. It's a 12 hour course in one month, full immersion. 
go get them a coach, go get them trained up. You are not the one to do it. You have a bandwidth right here and your bandwidth says generate revenue, generate revenue, generate revenue, not train talent, go get talent uh, coaches. Okay, so that's all I have there for you, everybody. This has been Monday Mojo with my new headphones. I really hope everyone has heard this uh, because I can't hear anything. Noise canceling with these headphones are amazing, uh, but it looks like we have a thumb up. Thank you, thumb up. And uh, if y'all need anything, come find us. You can come find me here in the I Love Coaching community. You can come find us with the I Love Coaching podcast. Go to ilovecoachingco.com. Go get a free coaching call. And uh, we'll see you next Monday with Monday Mojo. See you, bye.